Here we're going to be looking at purchase discounts and we're going to be comparing the gross method versus the net method here for recording these discounts here. And our example is going to be based just on a periodic inventory method here where the purchases here are considered cost of goods sold here for the period here. So we're going to make some purchases say of inventory here but we're going to cost them out for the period here on our income statement through the cost of goods sold. And that's how we'll be looking at our example here for recording these discounts. And for example here Corporation A records a purchase made on credit. Um, on 6 1 here for purchase of $20,000 worth of goods with the terms 2 slash 10 net 30, which means you get a 2% purchase discount if paid within 10 days, and the gross amount here is due within 30 days. So if you pay any of the uh, uh, amount here of that uh, those $20,000 worth of goods purchased within the first 10 days you get a 2% discount on that amount and then the net uh, total amount here is due within 30 days and for example here we'll just have the very simple example here where we again we purchase the $20,000 worth of goods here on accounts payable here and then uh, later here on 6-6 six, six, we paid it $8,000 invoice on that uh, $20,000 purchase. We paid $8,000 here of that. And then on 7, and that's paid within the discount period here. But then on 710, uh, we paid the remaining balance here of $12,000 of the $20,000. But that's paid after the discount period here. So we're not going to get any discount here in this $12,000 worth. But we are on the amount here of $8,000 that we paid within the discount period. So now let's go up and look at uh, this gross. First, let's look at the gross method how how we'd record that here and uh, then we have I'm showing it here the purchases account here on the income statement and then our balance sheet accounts here and cash and accounts payable but for our this gross method here this is where you enter the purchase and the payable at the gross amount here so our gross amount here was that twenty thousand dollars worth of purchases that we made here so we debit our purchases account here uh, for twenty thousand dollars and then the balance here or the crediting amount here would go to accounts payable credit that here for twenty thousand dollars here now remember this is the gross method here so we're recording it here at the gross amount now we have to deal with the um, two payments that we made here the first for the eight thousand dollar payment here um, that's where you record the purchase discount only when the payment is made within the discount period in this case we are making this eight thousand dollar payment within the period here so we get the two percent discount and two percent of the eight thousand is a hundred and sixty dollars so we'd credit our purchase discount here uh, for a hundred and sixty dollars now remember this purchase discount here uh, with the gross method you report the purchase discount as a deduction here from purchases on the income statement so this purchase discount acts as a contra account to our purchases account here and uh, we got the credit amount here for hundred and sixty dollars here for a purchase discount here then we need uh, balancing entries here so um, the other credit here will go to our cash account here we credit or reduce our cash here for seventy eight hundred and forty dollars that's simply the difference between that eight thousand dollar payment less the hundred and sixty dollar purchase discount that gives us seventy eight hundred and forty dollars here and then the accounts payable with the debiting amount here for that uh, eight thousand dollar payment would be to debit or reduce our accounts payable there. Now remember now we got that last payment here of $12,000 and all we do is credit or reduce our cash account here for $12,000 and then the debit here would be to reduce our accounts payable here for $12,000. Again this is the gross method here and this $12,000 well we don't get any purchase discount on it because that's paid outside the discount period here so um, this is how you would record it here with this gross method. Now let's go and look at our net method here and how we'd record that here. Now again looking at our purchases account here you record the purchases and the payables at the net amount here which represents the cash price here. So remember we had the twenty thousand dollars worth of purchases that we made well the net amount here would be well we would take just consider the full two percent discount at this time so what we have on our net amount here would be the 20,000 times 98% here or 100% less the 2% discount is 98%. So 98% of this 20,000 we would debit or increase our purchases account here for $19,600. And then uh, the crediting amount here would go to our accounts payable here for $19,600. Again this is recorded here at the net amount here. Now we have to deal with the uh, uh, the payment here we get that first we have that uh, uh, $8,000 payment that we make here now again 
uh, we would credit or reduce our cash account here for $7,840. And that's at the net amount here. We have the $8,000 payment here times 98% gives us a credit or reduce our cash here by $7,840. And then the debit amount here would be go to reduce our accounts payable here for $7,840. So this is using the net method here. It's just 98, uh, whatever our percent discount is, uh, to subtract that from 100% here. So we end up with 98% here of $8,000 that we're recording here. And now it comes for that final payment that we made here. And remember, this payment was made outside of the discount period. So we can't take any discount, purchase discount on it. So the purchase discounts not taken reflect penalties added to this established price here. So what we've done here is on this $12,000 payment that's outside of our uh, payment period or we can't we can't get a cash discount or a purchase discount on it. What we do is we set up this purchase discount and lost account here in a net method and that uh, adds to the purchase cost here. So in this case what we would do is uh, that $12,000 payment where we don't get the um, discount here we take that times 2% the discount lost here that equals $240. So what we would do is we debit our purchase discounts lost here for $240. Now again with this net method you consider this purchase discount lost account that we have set up here is an other expense here item on our income statement. So it's really an ad added expense here that we have to recognize for that lost discount and that adds to our purchases cost here. So then let's look at the balancing amount here for the, that $240 debit amount here for purchase discounts. So we would set up our accounts payable here. We would be debiting that here for $11,760. The difference here between the $12,000 uh, payment that we had was made here less this purchase discount loss the $240 gives us $11,760. And then uh, we've got our two debits amounts here of $240 plus $11,760 here to our accounts payable. Those two debit amounts, well, they would add up here to or the balancing amount would be to our cash account here. Where we would credit that here or reduce our cash here for $12,000. Okay, so just in summary here, when you're using this net method here, remember that you would record your purchases here. Uh, at the net amount here, that would be whatever the um, net of the uh, discount or the discount. You include whatever purchase discount you would be getting in your initial purchase here, and then um, with the gross method here, or oh, back here to this net method here, and then for any discounts that you've lost for the period here, you have to set up this purchase discount lost here account, and you'd have to debit that or increase it here, and that represents just an additional expense here for those lost discounts. Now let's go up here to our gross method here. Just to review here for the gross method here, this is where you just record your uh, purchase here at the gross amount here, and then you have, then for any purchase discounts that you only within the payment or the discount period here then you would record your purchase discounts. Now there's one last thing that we want to look at here and let's just look at purchase returns and allowance which relates to all of this and we're going to be just looking at just comparing the gross method here to the net method and let's just say for example just for purposes here a demonstration let's just say we returned uh, $1,200 worth of the uh, $20,000 worth of purchases that we made we returned twelve hundred dollars here to the vendor so what we would do here is we debit or decrease our accounts payable here this is for the gross method for that gross amount here of twelve hundred dollars and then our purchase returns and allowance again this the the purchase returns that would be on our income statement we would credit that here for twelve hundred dollars here and then for the net method well this is where you just take the net amount here so you had this purchase return here of twelve hundred dollars so what you would do is just take twelve hundred dollars here, 98% uh, of that here gives us a debit amount here of $1,176. We'd reduce our accounts payable by that amount here, and then the purchase returns and allowances here in our income statement. Again, with the net method, we'd credit that here for the um, net, um, uh, net amount here of $1,176. $76. So you can just see gross method, you take the gross amount here, net method, you take the net amount here and do your recording.